Now, to continue our saga of guys not named Kobe Bryant on the farewell tour, I'm actually going to bring up a guy from their generation who was uh, there at All-Star Weekend, but not for the most memorable moments. Tracy McGrady is one of those biggest what-if guys in NBA history. Phil, I'll send it to you first. What stands out to you about his career? Um, what ifs kind of all over. I think uh, people think of him as this incredible scorer. Uh, we're thinking back to you know Houston um, with those 90 seconds, making up all those points, his ability to score over so many people. But you know, underrated defender. I mean, uh, look at his time in Toronto. That's that's one of the biggest what ifs. Imagine he had stayed with Vince Carter, and um, you know, according to a lot of guys in the league, that team with Antonio Davis, Charles Oakley, and the rest would have been a very strong contender. He you know, was a defensive monster, blocking a lot of shots. I think he was forced into a, into a role with Orlando, which he should have had either a healthy Grant Hill or Tim Duncan. Another huge what if. Like, um, I know Duncan didn't sign, but, but imagine Grant Hill had been healthy. You know, uh, maybe drank a little less Sprite and had some healthy ankles. But, um, <laughs> you know, and then with Yao Ming and, and Houston, I, I, I honestly think he gets downplayed a lot. Um you know, people say he's a good player, but I think he was, like, a really good player. Like, almost a, like a great player. Like, I would stack him against a lot of guys. I mean, who was that article? I think it was Kobe Bryant actually saying, like, like, like one of the guys actually beat him in a game where he would have the most trouble against was Tracy McGrady. Just yes. being Just being 6'8", a great ball handler, great rebounder for a size, shot blocker, stealer, had three-point range, had clutch gene. I mean... Honestly, if I'm redrafting a team and and you're asking me to pick a shooting guard or a small forward, he's at the top of that list, and uh, and I know there's a lot of talent there. Mm -hmm. Justin, what, was he pound for pound one of the most talented guys you ever saw? Absolutely. Um, Tracy McGrady, at his two-year peak, was the best shooting guard in the league. He was better than Kobe Bryant was at his peak, in my opinion. Um, his career, as Phil said, surrounded by what-ifs. I, I think if he was in a better situation, uh, if he had the right teammates, this was absolutely one of those elite shooting guards that you could build around. And the other thing that really stands out to me is McGrady kind of... He, he was one of those first off-ball guys that ended up initiating a lot of the offense. He would get mm -hmm. so low with his dribble. Uh, he'd get around uh, shorter defenders. He, he, he was like a point guard in a lot of ways. Um, but just an absolutely devastating score, clutch as they come. Um, it's just a shame that he wasn't rewarded with good teammates uh, throughout his career, uh, bad luck with injuries both in teammates and with himself. Um, but at his absolute peak, we're talking about a top 50 player in NBA history. Phil, uh, the fans in Toronto, of course, remember his early years with Vince. I mean, what was the biggest reason you think why he left? I think this is a really good story. I'm really gr glad you framed it that way. It's mm -hmm. the story of kind of seeing the grass is greener on the other side. I mean, this was a time when we saw a lot of guys. I remember uh, Steph Marbury left um, uh, Minnesota when they got uh, Kevin Garnett, uh, thinking, you know, he wants his own team. Like, the whole idea of wanting your own team was really big at that time, wanting everything on your shoulders, and he got it. But, you know, him and Doc Rivers weren't enough to get it done in Orlando. And you know he had some help in Houston. I, but turning back to uh, to Toronto, I I think this is why it's one of his biggest regrets ever because he realized that you know wanting the fame and stardom and money and being your own team, at the end of the day was was to the detriment of his overall career and possibly rings he could have gotten with his cousin in the in the budding We the North of the Six. Yeah, I remember the words he said before he left. Uh, I've got moves no one's seen before, and the world got to see them in a way. But, you know, things never work out how, how you, you really script them. Justin, do you think he's a first ballot Hall of Famer? I don't know about first ballot. Um, we're talking about a very brief peak, uh, mm -hmm. not a lot of success. I think eventually he'll get in. Um, just uh, He's got crazy accolades or, or individual accolades, I should say, uh, over his career. But... Um, just with the lack of team success, with kind of the injuries and, and career being cut short, uh, I think it would take a little bit longer for him to eventually get in. 
Phil, you mentioned that one, what is it, 20 point, 21 point uh, whatever effort. Were there any other moments that really stood out for you for his career? I mean, uh, the dunk contests, I think people, uh, it was an underrated athlete. Um, but honestly, it was literally just uh, that moment where I, like, I was a budding, re like, I got into basketball in 1995 when they, when the Toronto Raptors came in, and just seeing them have McGrady, I think that was an Isaiah Thomas pick, and that was, who was kind of underrated in terms of his, of his drafting, and then seeing Vince mm -hmm. come, knowing they were cousins, and finding that out as a young, as a young basketball fan, and just being like, this is it, and to me, it's just, it's, you know, before LeBron, it was the decision. And I think uh, it's going to haunt him the rest of his career. And that, as a Toronto fan, was uh, a little bit tough to swallow. Justin, if you had to pick one guy today who reminds you of the most of Tracy, who is it? Oh, man, that's tough. You're putting me yeah. on the spot there. Jeez, jeez, jeez. Man, honestly... He's not an can easy I say guy. this year's? I, can I say this year's version of DeRozan? Like now that he's like shooting a better percentage from three, McGrady was never a great three-point shooter, but just that length, uh, DeRozan starting to show some vision there. Uh, explosive athlete, uh, improved uh, handle. Uh, doesn't have the same kind of defensive repertoire, but I mean, there really aren't a lot of great shooting guards in the NBA. Um, at least that fit that same mold. Could you maybe um, so say I'm like a Paul with, George? With that That's, I was I was thinking Paul George too. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but Paul George is like six eleven. So actually, let's go with Andrew Wiggins. Hmm. Uh, Wiggins, I always thought McGrady was the best comp for Wiggins. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't have the three point shot I, again, and kind of a similar game to DeRozan. But either Wiggins or DeRozan, I, I think, are kind of in that McGrady mold. Mm -hmm. One last thought. Uh, we always think about Vince Carter in that dunk contest, but it was Tracy who threw those bounce passes that helped Vince get that win. So part of his legacy mm -hmm. we cannot forget.